interrupting this show for a special report. Because now it is time for Bag Lab. All right, uh, keeping with today's uh, strap theme, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make uh, smooth straps. So let me get some of my materials over here and then I'm going to have Danny swap back over to the overhead camera. All right, so what I mean by smooth straps. So um, the recommendations that I'm going to be talking about, I certainly don't use them all the time, but I thought it would be nice to talk about them in case you wanted to implement any of these um, recommendations for getting smooth straps. So what I mean by a non-smooth strap is sometimes you're probably familiar with after top stitching a strap, it might be a little wavy. Usually once you sew it into the finished bag, um, that problem solves itself, but um, there's certainly a few things that you can do in order to avoid that waviness and then just get that strap started off with completely smooth once you pull it off the sewing machine after top stitching. So the first and most simplest thing that you can do is cutting your fabric along the grain rather than cutting it from salvage to salvage. So what I mean by that, so I've got a bolt of fabric here and let me flip this over so you can see, oh, that side looks kinda dirty and dusty. All right, so here's my bolt of fabric. As you can see, the salvage is on one, on one end. So what I'll often do when I'm cutting my straps is I cut the strap from salvage to salvage. So I'll just cut, if I need a four inch wide strap, I'll just take my ruler and cut four inches all the way across from salvage to salvage. However, the first step of things that you can do to avoid waviness instead of cutting that direction is to cut parallel to the salvages. Doing this might, you might need to have a little bit of extra fabric, but if you cut along the salvage, say the four inches along the salvage instead, that'll greatly help um, in regards to avoiding that waviness that I was just talking about earlier. So. Another thing that you can do to avoid that waviness is when you're top stitching your strap, if you, let me pull out this cotton strap up so you could see the stitches. All right, so if you stitch your strap in the same direction going both ways, so often what I'll do is, because I like to use a certain area of my presser foot to line up for top stitching, what I'll often do is I'll stitch it from this direction and then when I'm coming back down the other direction, I'll flip it over. So. That way will result in some waviness. To avoid that, all you need to do is stitch it in the same direction going both ways. So um, sewing it uh, this direction and then just moving it over and sewing it from the same direction on the other side so the fabric is moving in the same way. Another and third method to avoid wavy straps is to use either a bit of twill tape which I have here and let me pull out a little bit of that so you can see what it looks like. It's quite thin, although very sturdy. So you can either use twill tape or you can use grow grain ribbon. You'll wanna look for grow grain ribbon that doesn't have a pattern to it. So a solid color like this will be nice and flat. Either of those will work for this method and you can either use the ribbon that's the same width as your finished strap or you can purchase ribbon or twill tape that's slightly less wide. So. For this demonstration, I'm using for a one inch uh, wide, actually I cut this wrong. Um, I meant to cut it two inches wide. Let me quickly cut this in half just so I can properly demonstrate. So, all right, I meant to cut two inches wide because I wanted a one inch wide cork strap and I just wanted the two layers of fabric. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that really quick. So because the finished strap is going to be one inch wide, I have either tool tape here, this tool tape is three quarters of an inch wide, or the grow grain ribbon is seven eighths of an inch. So both slightly less than the width of the strap. Um, in doing that, you'll reduce uh, either some of the ribbon showing, or if you're using this method with quilting cotton, you'll avoid having um, extra tape kind of uh, bulked up in the, the pressing. So. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my twill tape the length that I need. And again, this is obviously not a full long strap just for the demonstration. And I'm going to use a bit of washable fabric glue just to kind of temporarily hold this twill tape down. So again, you can use either the, the ribbon or the twill tape. And just 
going to go ahead and stick that down. And then I'm going to take my Wonder Clips and I'm just going to go ahead and fold this over so that both of the edges are aligned. And then after that's secured, you, just, you can just go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch as you normally would. And this piece right here, I top stitched before the show and I actually opted to go with two lines of top stitching just to securely hold that in place. And what that will do, um, even with only the two layers of the cork fabric, the, the twill tape or the ribbon is, uh, it's, not going, it's not bending, it's not stretching. Having that in there will be extra stability, especially with the thinner layer of just the, the two layers of cork, vinyl or leather. It's also, it's also possible to use that in uh, a pressed uh, quilting cotton strap. Like I was showing you earlier with that uh, strap or acrylic template, you can go ahead and cut the twill tape or the ribbon and insert that before top stitching as well, just like you did with the, the cork. So what I would do here again, you can, if you wanted to use the washable glue stick to hold the twill tape in place. Just slide that in there and then refold. Obviously you'll want to press this first and then attach some wonder clips and then go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and top stitch. And again, super sturdy, nice, smooth straps. So I hope you enjoyed that demonstration for the smooth straps. I think a couple weeks ago I said on the live show that I had coming up a demonstration how to make a, a two layer and a three layer strap. It's super easy and um, it's kind of an alternative if you're using thicker fabrics such as cork leather or vinyl. Perhaps four layers is a little bit too thick for your strap um, and you're not sure how to handle that um, to get the, a, a thinner strap. So Danny's going to flip to the overhead camera. So our traditional method for making straps is kind of like double fold bias tape. So pressing wrong sides together in half, pressing toward the crease on top and bottom, and then folding it back in half. So that's, that's how we get the four layers. If you're using, like I mentioned, cork, leather, or vinyl, sometimes those four layers are just too thick. So in this particular demonstration, we're working with um, a one inch wide strap. Obviously, if you need a different width, um, you can slightly alter the thickness. So for a two layer, one inch wide finish strap, I cut my piece to two inches wide. And then for uh, a three layer, one inch wide strap, I cut my piece to three inches wide. Um, so two inches, three inches. So for a two inch strap, um, we're just finger pressing the fabrics wrong sides together. However, sometimes just the two layers is a little bit um, not as sturdy or stable to hold up uh, what you need a strap to hold up for. So you can either use a layer of twill tape or a grill green ribbon. I'm going to be using twill tape here. And you want the twill tape or ribbon to be less wide than your finished strap just so that it's not showing on the, the outer edges when you finish the strap. So I'm using twill tape that's three quarters of an inch wide for my one inch wide strap. I drew a line straight down the middle and you can either just go ahead and pin this in place or if you feel more comfortable, you can use some washable fabric glue to glue it in place first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue it basically right down the center so there's a little bit of margin on either side. And I'm just going to do this quickly. I'm using a Fonz and Porter um, fabric glue marker for this. And so what the twill tape will do, because the twill tape doesn't stretch, so as you're using the strap and the weight of the bag is on your shoulder, um, the strap won't stretch having this on the inside. So what I'm going to do is grab my Wonder Clips and just go ahead and pin this wrong sides together in half. This method is really just good for fabrics that you can cut and leave raw such as cork leather or vinyl. You can either leave it raw or you can finish the edges after top stitching with something, either a seam sealant 
Giordini paints, you can paint the edges or you can use edge coat to paint the edges. I have two separate videos which I've linked to in the description, one on Giordini paints and one on edge coat in case you'd like to see what those options look like. Um, but if you'd like to leave it raw, you can do that as well. So for the three layer strap, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to draw a line that's one inch away from one of the long edges. And I'm going to use that line as a placement for folding because instead of two layers for the strap, we're going to have three layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the edge that's furthest away from the line and then bring it up to meet the line. You can either use the fabric glue to hold this layer down or you can just use Wonder Clips to temporarily hold it down. So I'm just going to use Wonder Clips just so you can see a different option than using the fabric glue. And then this, this opposite edge, I'm just going to bring it directly on top so that it creates the three layers. And since I have those Wonder Clips over there, I'm just gonna go ahead and move each Wonder Clip one at a time so it's directly on top. Okay, and then you'll just take this over to your, sew your sewing machine and top stitch uh, both of the long edges. By the way, I wanted to mention um, when using those paints, um, if you didn't want to coat the whole entire edge, um, you could certainly paint the edge that will be showing, um, especially on the three layer strap, just because this is a finished edge. If you wanted to um, paint the edge first before you complete this process, you could do that. Um, just make sure that it's completely dry um, before you proceed with the finger pressing and the stitching. But um, this is a great way to have less substantial straps if you're using a different substrate like cork or leather. Okay, so as you can see, easy peasy to have different amounts of layers in your finished strap. Um, let me know in the comments what you prefer as far as layers, how many layers you're usually using. For me, um, I'm most often just making my straps with quilting cotton, so four layers it is for me, four layers plus uh, the shape flex uh, interfacing in between. Uh, but once in a while I do like to change it up with a cork strap and I often like uh, that two layer strap for um, I guess the simplicity of it. I've done a demonstration in the past for making a double sided strap with either cork vinyl or leather, um, sometimes in combination with quilting cotton. Um, but today I wanted to demonstrate how to make a double sided strap when you're only using quilting cotton, such as what I've done here for this um, cavalcade travel bag. I made one side in red fabric and the other side in navy fabric. So it's really quick and easy to do this and Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you how. Okay, so I'm demonstrating this method for a one inch finished strap. So if you're making a different width of finished strap, all you'll need to do is take the finished um, strap width as far as the piece that the pattern tells you to cut and divide it by two and then you'll be adding the seam allowance. So the seam allowance here will be a quarter of an inch. So for my two pieces, I'm going to cut them two inches and a quarter each. And I'm using a solid fabric. You can use a print as well. So you'll just need these two pieces. Obviously, you'll want a long piece, the length of um, the strap or handle that you're using for whatever pattern. For my demonstration, I just have these, these shorter pieces. So you have these two pieces and you're first going to sew them right sides together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance because that's the seam allowance that we added. So here I've got my piece and I've stitched it using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then you're going to press the seam open just like this. And then you'll wanna cut a piece of shape flex that's the same width uh, as your piece. So I've got my shape flex piece cut right here and I'm going to lay the bumpy side with the adhesive against the wrong side of the fabric and you'll just fuse it in place and make sure that that seam stays pressed open as you're fusing that shape flex on top of it. After the interfacing is applied, let me take my wonder clips off, you'll be pressing like double fold bias tape. So we're going to be pressing first wrong sides together in half. And I found it helpful when I was at the ironing board to sort of take my fingers and roll out that seam so that the seam is right in the middle and you have equal amounts of fabric on either side. 
After that, you'll open the fabric out, press the lower edge up toward the center crease. Same thing with the top edge, and then you'll refold and press one more time. So this is what it will look like on either side. And then all that's left is to top stitch it. So I top stitched using an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and then my strap is ready to use in my bag. So super easy, um, a nice way to give a little bit of extra visual interest to your straps or handles. And I think uh, I really like the look because there's a little bit of red in the fabric and because I use the red on the back side of the double sided straps, you can sort of, it sort of picks it up when you're carrying the bag, just a little bit of red coming through. So um, I really liked that effect. Um, and um, let me know if you try that out in the future. I think it's really quick and easy is how to add a chain strap to a bag. Um, and this is what I mean by a chain strap. So I had an email a few weeks ago asking if I would demonstrate this on the show. So um, gladly. And by the way, I love reading your emails. If you ever have a suggestion for me, um, you can always email me. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. These purse chain straps, I got this one on Etsy. They come in different lengths. And so you'll just want to check depending on the length that you prefer before you purchase one. Just check that it's the length that you like. And also, I linked in the description to this exact one that I purchased, but if you're interested in checking out an array of different purse chain straps, you can just type in um, chain strap uh, in the Etsy search box and you can see um, different lengths and different styles of the purse chain strap. So I'm gonna have Danny switch over to the overhead really quickly. Um, I wasn't, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find this little bag that I made years ago, but it's basically just sort of like a little zipper pouch and I attached the, a, a shorter chain strap on either end. So uh, this is from my book, Windy City Bags. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to locate the actual bag. You know, it's somewhere in the basement, but um, who knows where, I, I stuff bags within bags within bags. So um, who knows where it is, but I wanted to show you this Starling bag. So the demonstration for tonight is using the tab style and D-rings, such as for the Starling bag. The D-rings are for attaching the purse chain on either end, um, but I wanted to make a note. I feel like maybe this is just personal preference, but I feel like purse chain straps work best with smaller bags because obviously this is metal, and if you have a larger bag, chances are the bag is heavier and you might not necessarily want a heavy bag and chain on your, on your shoulder. But I did wanted to show you this bag because I, I did have it handy in the studio and the D-ring is a little twisted. As you can see, so a, a better size, I pulled a couple of other little projects for examples for a better size for a purse chain strap. These are both Paladin pouches, but I just wanted to give you sort of examples for um, a size range that would work a little bit better for that purse chain strap. And again, you might prefer a shorter chain or a longer chain, it's up to you. So I'm going to be sharing a video demonstrating how I added these little tabs of fabric and D-rings to the side of the bag. You can add this to the side of just about any bag and then clip on your purse chain. But um, for this particular demonstration, I use three quarters of an inch D-rings and then I cut two strips of fabric with straight flex interfacing. The fabric was cut three and a half inches by two inches, and then the shape flex was cut slightly smaller minus the seam allowance. So um, enjoy this uh, demonstration and we'll have a little chat um, after that video. And then go ahead and pull out your side tab. So if you're using quilting cotton or another material, you should have a piece of shape flex interfacing on the wrong side. And if you're using cork, vinyl, or leather, your piece should be cut slightly smaller. So I'll show you both methods how to prepare and top stitch. For the cork, let's start off with the cork. We're going to be drawing a line down the center. And I'm going to use Wonder Clips to finger press both of the long edges toward that center line. Next, you'll top stitch both of the long edges a quarter of an inch 
in and you'll stop stitching an eighth of an inch away from the bottom edge. Now to prepare this quilting cotton piece, if you're quilting using quilting cotton instead, you'll fold the fabric so that both of the long edges meet and we'll be stitching using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We'll sew this long edge and then just one of the short ends. The other short end will be left unsewn. Okay, go ahead and clip the corner, which means cut on a diagonal without cutting into the stitching. And now we're going to turn this right side out and press. So I'm going to use the easy point and turner. So I'm going to slide the tool through the opening and then I'm going to secure it to turn it right side out. Gently push out the corners and then give this piece a press. And you'll be doing the same thing for this second side tab piece. So just as we did with the cork fabric, we're going to stitch both of the long edges using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and we're going to stop an eighth of an inch away from the bottom edge. So you can mark that on your edge if you prefer so you know where to stop. Okay, so this next set of steps is the same whether you're using the quilting cotton or the cork vinyl or leather. So place the top raw edge at the top and we're going to be measuring one and a quarter of an inch down from the top edge and drawing a line straight across. Take out the two D rings and we're going to be placing this side tab fabric on the D-ring and we're going to fold back the fabric at the line that we just drew. So here's the, the back side where the raw edge is. I'm going to use a wonder clip to hold that in place and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other D-ring as well. Now pull out the exterior of the bag and we're going to be focusing on this top section of the bag where the zipper tab A piece is. I'm going to draw a line that's three quarters of an inch down. And I'm marking it just on that zipper tab A fabric. And we're going to place this folded back edge of the side tab at the line and it should be centered. So basically it'll fall within this zipper tab A piece. So we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. So work your way around this little side tab piece and when you get to approximately a half an inch below the hardware, you're going to sew straight across. And we'll be repeating this step for the second side tab piece and the opposite side of the bag. I'm just adjusting my stitch length because I wanted to come down in the corner. So I decreased my stitch length so that I wouldn't pass up that side tab fabric. And then uh, I decreased to about one and a half millimeters. And then after I stitched into the corner, increased it back to my top stitching stitch length, which is three millimeters. you'll sew the second side tab on in the same manner and then if you prefer to attach a Chicago screw or rivet to the side tab you can do so at this time. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration showing how to add the little tab with the d-ring to the side of your bag. 
Um, for that particular bag in the demonstration, it didn't have a side panel, and so that's why the bag was partially assembled, or at least the exterior was. If you're working with a bag pattern that actually has just a side panel, you can go ahead and attach that tab fabric with the D-ring to the side panel when it's just flat and unattached to other parts of the bag. And again, in that example, I used three quarters of an inch D-rings and I cut that those two pieces of fabric to three and a half inches by two inches. It's been some years since I made a bag with grommets where the, the handles or straps are actually threaded through the grommets as sort of a design feature, but I pulled this one um, out of the bag stash and I wanted to share with you an idea for a different way to insert your handles. So I have this bag. This bag is actually from my second book, Windy City Bags. And as you can see, I've got my grommets installed. So the thing about this particular application for the grommets is you don't install the grommets until the bag is pretty much all completed because the grommets have to go through the exterior and the lining fabric the bag gets finished and then you install them which is maybe a teeny bit nerve wracking because you're making holes through your fully finished bag but you certainly can practice first on a scrap of fabric before you install these i installed these grommets using my tabletop rivet press but there's a few options out there for grommets including handheld presses, and I've also seen and also used grommets where you um, sort of just snap them into place. Um, those particular grommets I found in the um, curtain or upholstery section of my local fabric store. Um, what else was I going to say about these grommets? So Danny will switch to the overhead so that I can um, show you these grommets. These particular grommets are one inch wide and uh, what else was I going to say about them? Let me um, unzip the bag so that you can see that the grommet goes through both layers of the fabric. So the thing about these grommets is you want to leave at least a one inch clearance from the top of the grommet to um, the unfinished top edge of the bag um, because you need to leave room for top stitching and basically you just don't want that grommet so close so that it's sitting like right up against your top stitching. So leave at least one inch and depending on the bag that you're working with, uh, you'll want to consider the placement for how far apart you want them. Um, if you're working off a pattern, you can consider where that particular pattern, um, how far the straps are in in the pattern and you can use that as a guide for how far in you will install uh, the grommets. Um, I also have a link in the description to my rivet press video in case you would like to see um, how I install grommets on my rivet press. Um, again, that link is in the description. And uh, for my straps for this particular bag, I just cut and sewed two pieces, each 40 inches long, and I attached them using just a seam, sewing them right sides together to make one long strap because um, this handle will just be threaded through the front and back of the bag. And so we only need the one piece of the strap. I top stitched um, the center of the strap piece and then I actually unpicked these ends but you will be leaving these ends unsewed because we need to have the ends loose for threading the strap and then when we're done we'll finish the strap and um, enclose all of the raw edges and finish the top stitching. Okay so here's here's the bag I've got my my strap piece and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and start threading it through the bag so I'm just going to pick a side um, enter this. Oh, I also wanted to mention you want the width of your finished strap to be able to fit in the inner portion of the grommets. And so um, my strap is pressed like double full bias tape, so four layers of the strap piece. So you'll just want to calculate my strap finishes three quarters of an inch wide. And so multiplying that by three, that's three inches. So you'll just need to calculate that for um, the particular grommets that you're using. So I'm just going to go ahead and thread that through one side bring it through the opposite, uh, so the front of the bag, making sure that that uh, strap piece stays so that it's not twisted. And then you can pull about um, half of it through, approximately half of it through, and we'll be um, sort of finessing the length of the strap um, later when we're done with uh, connecting the other end. So again, making sure it's not twisted, we're going to insert it through the opposite end and you don't need to pull it all the way through because you need to have some of this handle uh, kind of pulled out on the front and the back okay so let me 
switch to the overhead so that you can see how I insert this. Um, this is the last grommet that it's going through. Okay, so I'm just going to pull, so I have approximately equal amounts on this side and on this side. So now what we need to do is we need to finish the raw edges of the strap piece. So I left a couple of inches unsewn on either side. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and sew these so that the right sides together. So where's my wonder clips? Here we go. Okay, so you're just going to sew this end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then when that end is sewn, you're just going to press this last two inches on either side, just like you did with the, the rest of the handle piece, and then finish the top stitching. So once this top stitching is completed, you have just the continuous length of the strap. And then all you need to do is pull it through both sides so that you have approximately equal amounts um, of the strap sewing on either end because you want your handles to be even. And then um, the bag is finished. Okay, so basically that was a, a creative way of using grommets. Um, and you could also, if you wanted to have the strap threaded on the side panels, you'll just wanna take into consideration that um, you do see the strap coming through the lining of the bag like you can see here. So um, you'll just wanna make sure that works for the design of the bag that you're working with. And um, again, just another way to creatively use grommets in your bag. So this is a, a well-used bag. I used to take this bag um, on airplanes. This is a Sloan Travel, Sloan Travel bag and um, it does have padded straps. So the straps are quilting cotton, but it's got a layer of foam interfacing um, inputted in between the layers before I top stitched it. So um, I wanted to share that bag because it kind of fit in with Teresa's question and Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera. I made a little sample. Obviously this is not the full length of a strap, but just so you could get the idea, I made a little sample before the show. This is uh, quilting cotton and uh, the foam interfacing is inserted in the middle and I made two rows of top stitching on either side. One row would be sufficient. I just wanted to jazz it up a little bit, but it's really quick and easy to make a padded strap. So I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So I've got my strap fabric cut out and you'll be cutting this per whatever pattern that you're working on. I've already attached it to the Shape Flex interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric. And I actually cut my piece of foam interfacing. So I cut it the seam allowance of the bag, so depending on how you're um, attaching the strap piece, perhaps you're attaching it to the top edge of the bag. So you wanna take whatever that seam allowance is wherever you're attaching the strap and multiply that by two. So um, for this example, we're going to go with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So a quarter of an inch plus a quarter of an inch is a half an inch. And um, I'm going to add an extra half an inch to whatever that was. So we're cutting this foam interfacing not as long as the fabric and that's on purpose to leave it out of the seam allowance because as you can imagine, the layers of your bag interfacing, the body of the bag, plus this extra strap, plus the what I call a strap insert that, that creates a lot of bulk. So we wanna keep this out of the seam allowance, especially because we already have interfacing to stabilize the actual strap fabric. And I've actually cut it so the width of the finished strap is one inch. So I've cut it a hair smaller. So I've cut this foam piece seven eighths of an inch. And you can certainly make adjustments once you get your foam piece um, embedded in between the layers. So what I'm going to do, I, I already pressed this before the show, um, like double fold bias tape. So wrong sides together in half, and then I press the bottom and top edges toward that center crease. And so all you need to do is make sure the foam piece is centered and my foam piece is sort of starting to yellow because um, I have a roll of foam interfacing and as it gets exposed to light over the time, it sort of changes from white to yellowish. It doesn't affect the finished bag at all, but um, all the better to see the sort of yellowing foam interfacing in the demonstration. So you're just going to go ahead and fold it in between the layers. Danny, can you pass me my Wonder Clips, my little cup of Wonder Clips over there? I don't see them. Uh, should be right under this stuff over here. 
No wonder clips. Okay, we'll we'll just do this without the wonder clips. Then your bed on the side over there. No, that's fine. Okay, so you'll just go ahead and fold it within the layers, so all of the raw edges will be enclosed. Thank you very much. And then you'll just go ahead and make sure um, those pressed edges meet. So very simple to do. And as, as I usually do for top stitching, I went ahead when I top stitched this sample, I increased my stitch length to three millimeters. So a longer stitch length just to make the stitches look nice. And super simple. And then you can just go ahead and continue following the instructions for the pattern. And then your strap is nice and padded. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. As I mentioned, super simple to do and you probably likely have scraps of foam interfacing on hand and it is a good way to save up your little itty bitty foam interfacing scraps and use it for um, a different use such as for the padded strap. Thank you.